you know, I guess I wanted to start off with, you know, maybe just give uh, give people the origin story of how Alchemon came about. I mean, I assume you were bitten by a radioactive Pokemon, and that's <laughs> uh, that's like. <laughs> What's up, guys? Frugal BC here from the Frugal BC YouTube channel. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I got a really cool guest for our crypto talk. Today, we got Clifford, the CEO of Alchemon. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Good, good. Uh, I'm just really excited to talk to you about this today because uh, we're, you know, I've, I've played the game now and I did a review on it and uh, obviously beta version, but yet, but uh, pretty, pretty smooth overall. I was, I was actually expecting a few more bugs. I noticed a couple. A couple after some collision detection stuff, like after uh, after I did the video. So I mean, it's it's not perfect, perfect, but I mean, for a beta, it's pretty far along. And yeah, you know, I guess I wanted to start off with, you know, maybe just give uh, give people the origin story of how Alchemon came about. I mean, I assume you were bitten by a radioactive Pokemon, and that's <laughs> uh, that's like. <laughs> you can yeah, tell I'm a, you can tell I'm a Spider Man fan, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, so basically, um, you know, I got an Algorand, uh, you know, via Coinbase Rewards. Um, That's how know, I joined it too. Yeah, yeah. And I actually, you know, I'm the type of person that, you know, I'm, before Alchemon, I was working at a, uh, a computer boot camp, a coding boot camp. And so whenever, before I invested in these blockchains, I always wanted to test them out. And Algorand was one of the first ones that I tested out. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, this is the future, you know, this blockchain technology is awesome. Um, but then I went to test out some other blockchains and uh, it was not the future. <laughs> it was Interesting. terrible. Um, what was I, it? Was it, uh, was it the ease of programming or what, what made you say that? Um, just the ease, probably the ease of transactions and fees. So basically mm -hmm. what happened was uh, I decided uh, to try Ethereum and use Uniswap. Mm -hmm. And so I was just messing around, like I wasn't trying to like actually like, you know, um, invest in anything really. I just wanted to do like a $30 transaction. So I thought I'd do a Uniswap swap. So I had my $30 of ETH. And uh, so then I tried to do a swap and then I paid a $10 gas fee and I was like, okay, well, this sucks. Mm -hmm. And then the swap didn't come through and I was like, uh, what's going on? So then I tried to figure out what happened. And it turns out that the first transaction I did was literally just a transaction to prove to the blockchain that I had the $30 in my wallet. Yeah. So I paid $10 to prove to everyone that I had $30 in my wallet. And I was like, okay, well that sucks, but I'm still gonna try to see this through. Right. And then the swap transaction would have been $20. And I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh, I'm almost paying $30 to swap $30. And now this it's is, even now it's even worse. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is not the future. This is not mm -hmm. like, you know, this is not how things are. How you know, blockchain technology is going to be uh, dispersed out into the world. Like, this isn't going to work. Um, and so I didn't even do the transaction. I just wasted my ten dollars uh, on yeah, the first. If I, could, if I could just pause you for a second. Like, it's this thing that. This is one of the big frustrations I had with crypto and with crypto YouTube, frankly, because nobody for a long time, it seemed like nobody was talking about this. Everyone was talking about these Ethereum projects and like no one was bringing that up. I was like, how can you guys not be talking about this? Now, I've started to see that more recently as the gas fees got really high. But I mean, I encountered this on day one when I started trying to do some DeFi stuff in the Ethereum space. I think yeah. I tried to do some compound stuff and it's like. You just you, you just get hosed because you yeah like you said you do the first transaction and then you think okay that kind of sucked but I guess it's over and it's going to go through oh no there's like a second part to this too oh um, yeah yeah you have to basically you have to know everything you want to do before you do it with yeah. with somehow learning it <laughs> you know you have to already know what you want to do to make that blockchain work for you if that makes sense like right. there's no like slow steady on ramp it's just like if you don't know what you're doing you're going to get hosed <laughs> yep yep and there's no there's no way to easily learn that stuff outside of actually doing it at least for me I'm a, I'm a, i want to do something to you know to know that it works so totally. um, and then even after that i wasn't fully convinced on algorand 
I then tried to do polygon, you know, a layer two, and that was, I couldn't figure that out, you know, and I'm a, you know, I was working at the time at a technology boot camp. Like we're teaching right. people how to write code. Like I'm not <laughs> like a professional programmer or anything like that. But like, you know, if I can't figure it out, the average Joe is definitely not going to figure it out. Right. So I didn't know how good I had it, you know, the couple of little things I did on Algorand. So I was like, okay, well, I'm sticking with Algorand. Um, and so then I just immersed myself in the Algorand uh, ecosystem and, uh, you know, saw some some of the earliest NFTs, you know, people giving out free NFTs and stuff like that. And at first I was just like, you know, why would I want any of this? And you're like, what, what is this, you know, just totally not understanding like Algo Kittens, you know, was definitely one of the first ones. Um, and then uh, what was it? It was uh, Yieldings. I saw Yieldings and I hmm. bought a Yielding. I'll never forget the day when I bought my first Yielding. Uh, Stitch Bob, well, like, he just goes by Stitch now. He posted like 10 at a time. And I'm sitting there like looking at these 10 being like, oh, I don't want that one. I don't want that one. I don't want that one. Waiting for a better one to buy. And like these at the time are like two algo, four algo, eight algo. And so I only bought one when I could have sat there and bought like, you know, all of them. Anyways, and then later, obviously, like no one knew at the time, but then they took off. And now they're worth like 800,000 algo a piece, you know? Wow. Um, and so I had, I did my turn of flipping NFTs, just buying NFTs and flipping them, and making some decent side money off of that, um, you know? And then at the same time, I was, you know, reading up on what was going on in the NFT space. And meanwhile, while the NFT space is literally like just getting off the ground in algorithm, um, there were news reports on Ethereum, like some guy who owned a bunch of crypto pumps got signed by a Hollywood agency. And it's just like, I'm reading this and I'm like, how does this make sense? Like, right. what am I missing? Like, this makes no sense at all. <laughs> um, and then all the, the big news stories on NFTs were, how do we extract value? Like, let's say you bought an NFT and it's worth a million dollars. How do you extract value from that without selling it and no longer mm -hmm. having it? So these were the things that the Ethereum blockchain was trying to work on while the Algorand blockchain was just, you know, basically some JPEGs that people were flipping. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, great. I, you know, I want to do a project. I want to come up with something and the, the, you know, the project is going to have, you know, a reason to buy more than just the art. Like we'll have good art, but a reason to buy, a reason to hold, a reason to trade. Um, so then we're like, how do we do that? So then it's like, okay, great. We have tiers. We have one that mm -hmm. evolved. And so then it kind of worked back, you know, me being 36 years old, you know, I definitely grew up, you know, my, uh, on Pokemon and stuff like that. They've created a whole like monster collecting evolving genre. Mm -hmm. So I was like, great. That's the genre we're going to do. It makes sense for the purpose we want to have, which is having these NFTs that can be better, that you can buy, hold, trade in for better ones. And that's kind of how it all started. And then like you decide to, you know, you decide to start this project. What does that even look like? Like, I, you know, I've talked to someone who started an ASA and, uh, and they said, when I talked to the Akita, one of the Akita Inu folks back in the day, and I, I asked them about like what it was like to start that. And they said the ASA was actually fairly easier than you might think, but I got to think a project like Alchemon, that's got to be, that's got to be pretty complicated. Like, how do you go about that? Yeah, it's just, you know, there's lots of moving parts, but it's just like you have to make all the moving parts make sense, you know, like we, you know, something that uh, about me is I've always underestimated the community, every release, every, you know, everything I do is underestimating like what the community wants, you know, um, you know, which leads to like sellouts and things like that, which, you know, we, you know. If there's something to distinguish is that in the typical NFT market, you know, sales are driven by, you know, FOMO, they're, you know, holding yeah. is driven by exclusivity, um, you know, community and things like that. There are just some aspects of those that I don't personally like, Like, yes, I'm a huge NFT fan. You know, I have my Goana, you know, I own tons of these projects and I love NFTs, but there are issues with the whole NFT space and what it means to be an NFT holder and you know of any project that i just don't like right. you know yeah and so yeah. those are the problems that we're trying to solve with this and this was never supposed to well i shouldn't say never but this in its 
initial um, form wasn't supposed to be a video. This was just supposed to be a collection. Game. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I called it a game because to me it has rules, it has a purpose, you know, to get the best mm -hmm. cards, but it, you were just supposed to be collecting them. So I called it a game, and but the general public at large didn't agree that that was a game. So <laughs> the, the uh, public was like, okay, great, where's our game then? <laughs> exactly, from day one, where, where's the yeah. game, where's the game? And, you know, I tried explaining to people like, it is a game, like there are like boundaries, rules, purposes, it is a game, it's a collection game. And then people are like, well, there's no gameplay. So it's like, crap. And so after we started taking off, it was like, okay, great, we need to make a game. And so then the problem became, how do we make this into a game? So we did that. Well, what is, how do you, how, did, did you just start like hiring people? Like, is this, is this basically become like a pretty big business or how would you explain that? <clears throat> so basically what happened was, um, so the coding boot camp I worked at, I was called the Tech Academy, and mm -hmm. my brother-in-law owned that coding boot camp. And he's like a collector. He's got the binders full of the Pokemon cards and stuff like that. And so since like day one, he like found out what we were doing. And he was like, let me invest. Let me get in on this. Let me partner with you. And for a couple months, we we're just like, look, there's, there's not enough money in this for us. Like we're selling these things for five algo a piece. Like we have to sell like you know, hundreds of thousands of these things to even like, you know, consider paying any kind of salary or anything like that. Right. Um, so we turned them down several times until it was like, oh crap, we need a video game. So then we're like, great. If you can help us make a video game, like we're on board, we're in business together. And so what he did was he poached two of his own best employees from the tech academy who are already teaching people how to code in Unity and C Sharp and stuff like that. So he poached mm -hmm. his own employees for Alcamon to start developing a game. Um, and then we're really fortunate to get approved for a grant, um, which, you know, took a lot of uncertainty off. You know, like we're definitely all willing to work for five months with low to no pay. You know, mm -hmm. our initial developers and Jack, I don't think they had any pay for the first like three months or something like that that they were on. Was that you the know, Algorand was, Foundation grant? Did you get that? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that gave us a lot of, you know, that gave us kind of the push we needed to kind of like dive all in, you know, like, it's not as easy as just like you get a grant, they send you a bunch of money, like you actually have to like, develop these things, prove you developed them and all that stuff and milestones, like we're not even done with the grant yet, we're like two thirds of the way through. Okay. Um, so but it did give us the confidence there, like, we know we can do this, we can take this leap, we can quit our day jobs. So we were really fortunate to have that um, to get us to be able to develop this game. And how much uh, how much work goes into a game like this? I mean, tons. I mean, it's been you know two developers, three two developers over you know we released let's see we released our uh, beta our small beta our closed beta is what we call it. December, I believe it was. And, um, you know, they had been working on that for like three months with uh, two developers full time and one hired, I think, in the middle of that. And then it's been full time development for at least three or four now, four de developers for the past three months to get it to what it is now. What, what is the, uh, what language or languages are, is it coded in and how different is it from just developing like a regular game? Okay, yeah, that's a good question. So it's in Unity, um, which is a game engine, but it's coded through C Sharp in Unity. Okay. So um, very high level, powerful language. It's not just like a JavaScript, which is also powerful, but it's not just like a, you know, HTML, you know, JavaScript game, you know, it's done with, you know, things that, you know, Unity is also used to like release games on the PlayStation Store and stuff like that. So while we're not polished enough to be a AAA game at this time, like, the way we have built the game, we have the potential to polish it into that, to build it into that. We have the computing power, the platform power to do those things that we want to do with it. So it's definitely taken a, us a lot longer to get it off the ground, but now we're in like such a good position, such a good first building block that it's definitely all been worth it. Nice. I was going to ask you too, you know, so obviously when you build a game like this and you build it on Algorand, yeah, when you started, uh, there probably weren't a ton of examples of Algorand-based games. Was that kind of a challenge? Was there sort of a pioneering aspect to it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, there was, like, 
I don't know, maybe one kind of outdated how to connect to Unity. Like we kind of had to solve all of our problems ourselves, um, you know, which, you know, takes time and developers work and energy and debugging and all that stuff to make it work, but it's definitely been worth it. You know, we're hoping that we're blazing a trail that can make it, you know, easier for other people. But yeah, it's, you know, definitely the algorithm foundation of the algorithm community has been awesome and helped us out many times and things like that. But it's definitely, there's just tons of problems to solve all the time, you know. No, I, bet. I bet. Uh, what, what kind of feedback have you gotten from the community so far that since the beta has been out? People love it. Uh, definitely like people think it's, you know, a lot harder than they thought it would be, which is definitely like a design idea. Like we never wanted it to just be like, you know, just like you would click claim on Yieldly, you know, right, video yeah. games. <laughs> like press a couple buttons, you're basically just right. field farming with like a couple extra buttons. Like right. we never wanted that. We've had, you know, a lot of people surprised at the difficulty, um, a lot of people surprised at the balance, how balanced the game is. Um, you know, it's definitely blown people's expectations out of the water. Obviously, there's still a ton of work to be done to be like, you know, taken super seriously as a video game, you know, in the real video game world but you know we're here and we're building and we're building towards that and we'll keep it pushing keep it moving forward but you know everyone has like the future they want to see you know we're getting tons of great feedback but all in all the feedback has just been much beyond what people's expectations were which is always awesome to hear oh, that is cool yeah i was going to ask you too uh speaking of you kind of alluded to that a little bit so right now it's basically like a three three on three battle uh, I think the next step, is, as I recall, was like uh, people actually being able to battle human versus human, uh, battling their their critters against each other. Yeah, and that's then, that's that's definitely the next um, the next thing we're going to add. The next, I mean, we call it a new game mode. Like what's what exists now will be like casual, and then the PvP will be like you know hardcore or whatever you want to call it. Do you see that? Or do you see it going beyond that? Do you see it almost mimicking the the Pokemon games where there's that RPG element to it? Or how, how do you see it? What's your vision for it, I guess? Yeah, so the next two game modes after that that we have uh, planned is kind of like we definitely want to have like a co-op boss battle. So like one giant Alchemon and like people will have to like real people will have to like team up together with their own teams, maybe like, you know, five or six different people together uh, get on a team to defeat one giant Alchemon for rewards. Um, that's something we're thinking with. Also something that's a lot more aspirational and a lot more difficult that we really wanna do is kind of a story mode. Um, but what we want to do with that story mode is basically onboard people that know nothing about crypto, know nothing about blockchain. They just wanna, you know, they just found Alchemon by whatever way, and wanna do a uh, play to earn game. And then we'll, you know, be the custodians of all their assets that they earn in their wallet. And then through the story, they'll learn about blockchain, they'll learn about um, Algorand. And then once they're ready for it, then they can take over all their assets and take over their wallet and be someone on the Algorand blockchain. So those are kind of the next game modes after PVP that we have. Gotcha. Yeah. I would ask a little bit too about tokenomics. Like how did you guys, how did you guys learn the tokenomics? Were you able to make adjustments on the fly after learning from initial, like I know you talked about like initially selling the, Alchemons for like five algos and realize that well, that's not going to be sustainable. We're going to have to sell them for a little bit more than that. And then also like maybe you could talk a little bit about the balance between tokenomics and gameplay because that's something I talked about with uh, the guy from Akita Inu because he was also working on some gamify projects. And it felt it feels like because it feels like Alchemon gets it probably the closest I've seen to what can be maybe sustainable because uh, what you see a lot of times either it's like it's really game focused and the blockchain is almost in the background and not even really an element, or you kind of see the opposite where it's almost all about the, the blockchain part of it. Uh, Splinterlands is one that probably gets closer to the balance, but I feel like Alchemon has a pretty good balance right now, but maybe you can talk about, you know, developing the tokenomics, how you developed it, how you changed it, and then how that balance played out or how you guys thought about that balance. Yeah, so once this started, um, you know, we started in August of last year, um, and Algorand then was very different. There's uh, what I like to call before Tiny Man and after Tiny Man on Algorand. Oh, yeah. Two completely That's different, completely different blockchains. So we started, you know, sending out our Alka coin to everyone before it could even possibly have a work months before, you know, since day one, we've been 
giving Alcacoin to our Alcamon holders, um, you know, and we're just sitting there hoping, you know, the community adds value. Since day one, we've announced like, this is the community project. We still haven't sold one Alcacoin as Alcamon Inc. Uh, we are going through a seed round right now, so that will change mm -hmm. somewhat soon. But up to this point, we haven't sold a single Alcacoin. Um, it's to us, it's just, it's all for the community. Everything we do is for the people that have um, invested isn't the right word, but you know, have um, interacted with Alcamon, interacted with the Alcamon blockchain. They put their time and their algo into it. Like these are their assets in our opinion. And that's how we try to run the company. So then it's how do we responsibly give out these assets so we don't flood the market, we don't ruin we don't ruin it for everyone. Like we take that very seriously. So like right now we've just been giving out tons and tons of Alpha coin. Um, and it originally started that that was just all for users, a little bit for team and that's it. We did revise that recently, um, add in a second token, which was always kind of in the back of our minds as an idea um, for the game. And so now how it's kind of working out is we've given out so much Alcoin, we're in the position now where we need to start earning it back to yeah. be able to keep the system going on to infinity. Because if we just keep sending out, you know, we're sending out like 500k Alcoin a week right now, we do that for another 10 months without earning any back, we're just going to run out and then who knows what's going to happen. So right now we're in like, okay, great. How do we earn Alcoin back? How do we earn Alcoin back? Like that's the number one thing, uh, the next design thing on our mind, which how we're going to do that is a the next version of the video game the new um the new economics will be in there well basically you'll go in you'll use your altcoin to like buy um asa attacks uh you'll use your altcoin um in the future to enter into battles with other people um that gives both person a stake to finish out the battle not just quit out if you like get up against a team you don't like or something like that all right but then all the rewards that will pay out in the game will be out of gold so basically the video game is a way for people to come interact. The Alcamon Inc. is earning back Alcacoin and giving out Alca Gold. And then we can use the Alcacoin earned back to continue to send out to all the holders of the Alcamon. So we're trying to get this, you know, this circle going. Um, right now we're like at the first swing of the circle of giving out the Alcacoin. Now we just need to, you know, get the second swing around, and keep it going into the future of earning Alcacoin back doing what our users want us to do to say, yes, this is worth us paying you a thousand alpha coin for this asset, you know, et cetera. So that's kind of the development, uh, the game design phase that we're going into for the next release. So I was thinking about blockchain based games versus like non, you know, standard, standard games and systems. And it's, uh, I was trying to decide if one was easier or better than the other. And it seems like a trade-off. It seems like, with a blockchain based game, you have a way to monetize without without uh, outside of the traditional gatekeepers. So you, you don't have Apple taking like 30% of your revenue right off the top just to be in the app store. But on the flip side, you have to figure out all this. Uh, you have to figure out all this crazy tokenomics kind of yeah. on your own without a whole lot of roadmaps because there's just not a lot of examples out there yet. Yeah. And even, you know, even if some something else seems to work, you know, it doesn't always work. You know, it's, there's definitely there's definitely pitfalls and, you know, opinions and all that stuff. But yeah, I mean, the biggest problem with like making a game is the funding. So how do you get funding? Like making a game is not easy. You know, a lot, a lot of yeah. what a lot of the general public don't understand is that, you know, building anything takes time and it takes money. Mm -hmm. It takes people to build them who they need their time and their money, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I went, so, through, uh, I went through like a tutorial on how to build like a simple Space Invaders game in Python. And I was like, I got stuck so many times. And I was like yeah. following along. It wasn't even building it from scratch. Uh, I do like a little bit of coding, Python coding uh, for fun. But yeah, so I can't even imagine like something with the complexity and then the tokenomics too on top of that. Like I can't even imagine what that's like to work on. Yeah, yeah. So the good thing, I mean, traditional gaming, like, you know, people like you or me, like, no one's going to give us, you know, whatever, a couple million dollars to make a game, <laughs> you know, like, right. you have to like, if you want to work on traditional gaming, you have to go get a job at a, you know, gaming studio, and you already have to know those skills to be able to work there. So what the awesome thing about uh, the crypto, the, you know, crypto gaming is, 
you can, you know, and this obviously doesn't work in every situation, but you can get funding up front if what you, people like your vision and you're able to promote it and people like want to buy into that, they can, and then you can have the energy, the money and time needed to build that stuff. So that's the good thing about it is pretty much anyone can become a game developer in that way. Um, the bad thing about it is you don't have the traditional support. You know, you don't have the bottomless pockets to build. You don't have, you know, all the artists and everything at your disposal, but it is, you know, for people that are willing to pull up their bootstraps and make it happen, you can definitely make it happen. And then on the other, also going into that, you know, you have, you have stuff like Anorand where you have these huge rug pulls and, uh, you know, when something like does that, that happens, does that hurt you guys? Do you guys worry about credibility? I know you guys are, I don't know, they weren't doxxed and you guys are out there. So your team is out there. And I think there's probably a lot more trust because of that, but there's, is there still kind of a net effect? Do you think? I totally, I mean, people that have been around Algamon, you know, they know that, you know, I do my best to say what I do and do what I say, you know, mm -hmm. just kind of like my catchphrase, you know, and be open. And I've definitely, you know, over months and months of work, you know, proven that I'm here for the community and that, you know, this is more their project than it is mine, you know. Um, but it's it takes time and it takes a lot of work to do those things and prove that you are doing what you say you're doing. You know, and it does kind of suck, you know, to see like, you know, to see the engagement that projects like Anoran get. Like, yes, if it was a real project, it would have been cool. But to see like, you know, and I'm not complaining about outcome on engagement at all, but to see like, you know, someone can just kind of like swoop in in a month, just hype people up so much that they're like the next next big thing, you know, like we definitely definitely came across some people saying like that they're gonna be the number one game on the blockchain. It's just like they don't have anything, you know, right, like, yeah. you know, they got me too. Like, you know, I definitely, you know, I did invest like probably about between NFTs and the pre-sale about 500 algo. I'm not oh, ashamed wow. to admit that, but you know, I definitely, the people I talked to about it, I told them like, here's the problems. Here's why I'm only doing 500 algo. Like I have a high risk appetite, you know, mm -hmm. not everyone has one as high as me, but you know, I told the people that I told that I was investing in it. Like, these are the issues. I would invest more if these issues weren't there, but I'm only doing 500 because of this um, and yeah so they still got me it's just you know it's just one of those things where it's like things are not too good to be true until they're too good to be true sometimes right. you know? and it's just like one of those things you live and you learn um you well, know, the way, I, the way I put it on my channel is I said it's basically like you got you know you think of it when it's when it's at that, st that stage where there's no there's no real project out there yet it's really early you know, you have to think of it as if you're investing in this, you're basically, this, this, this is gambling money, like, right? Like, this yeah. is, don't invest money that you're not willing to lose. And also, it's not necessarily that you shouldn't. It's just, it, it's high potential upside, but also really high risk to be in that early. And so yeah. that, that's really yeah. the, the mindset, the framework, I think, that makes the most sense with something like Anor. And so I put like a little... I, I, I bought like 20 Anoran tokens, so I was at like 16 cents, but uh, I still have, I look at them in my wallet and I'm like, you know, maybe, hey, maybe like there's a way to bring this back somehow. <laughs> like, it's like almost a nostalgia. Hey, remember that time when they rug pulled? And I don't know. We'll, we'll see. You know, the yeah. one, so, something else I wanted to ask you about too is... Uh, have, have the Pokemon people reached, has Nintendo like reached out to you guys at all? Has there been any conflict there or is it? I don't think, so. no, I mean, they definitely have it. I don't think they will. I mean, I mean, we have our trademarks and stuff like that. Uh, you know, we do get criticism on that, but like the thing you have to understand is like they, Pokemon created a whole genre, you know, like they don't right. own everything that's, you know, related to Pokemon. Like, yes, we can't use, you know, if you look at the copyright law, you can't use their characters. We don't use any of their characters. Mm -hmm. You know, all of ours are original and stuff like that. Um, so we don't, you know, and we've had investors that have never even brought up a, you know, a thought about anything happened. It's kind of a general concern of the general public, but like, you know, like, yes, if we're using Pikachu, yeah, they can come sue us, but we're not, For you sure. know, we have our own yeah. characters, like, yes, we are a hardcore homage, like we are, like mm -hmm. we in design, like wanted to do that based off this, like we do play off nostalgia, like that's, these are all designed that way, you know? But we're also not saying we're Pokemon when we're not. So we don't really right. have, we don't have any concern of being sued or anything like that. It's just if you know the copyright law, we're, we're creating our own things. Yes, 
were using a genre that they created, but so have hundreds and maybe even thousands of other companies and games and stuff like that. Like there's hundreds of, you know, you can call it a Pokemon knockoff, but the problem is they created a genre. It's actually a monster hunter or monster evolving genre that many right. people I guess uh, the one thing I was going to kind of close with is uh, where do you see the company going? Like, do you see, do you see one day, maybe this is really, really far reaching into, you know, far into the future, but like, do you see this as being like a, like a games company where you have multiple titles under your, under your platform? Or do you guys see yourself sticking with Alcamon and just growing that to the nth degree? Or how do you, how do you envision that? Yeah, for the foreseeable future, um, it's Alchemon. And by foreseeable future, I mean like, you know, two or three years. Um, so basically how things are set up is technically Alchemon is actually offshore. It's owned in the British Virgin Islands. That's where that company is. And we're actually uh, in America, we're uh, called Stan Can Studios. So we're a, technically a gaming company. Like when you think Alchemon team, we're actually a US-based gaming studio technically. Uh for the long um so alchemon is a its own a company with its own shares in the british virgin islands um so we do we are a game studio uh, we actually got a request to build another game just recently but it's kind of like right now um we would have to hire on new developers to do that we're in no way going to put what we have with alchemon at risk to build someone else's game so but basically if someone also said hey here's $100,000 to build this game over the next six months. And we were 100% sure we could hire new developers that only work on that game, that they, we could use what we've learned from Alchemon uh, on a high level with new developers. Like we would be happy to do that, but we're definitely not going to, uh, not going to risk any second of development on Alchemon for someone else's project. Um, sure. So in the future, it's like we're going to, uh, make the game with a few more game modes and then what we're going to do is we're going to try to raise a round for building a metaverse out um, that hopefully we'll have something to show on that next year we haven't we've started that in some art and some 3d stuff but uh, that's kind of the two to three year plan is get a metaverse up and running and you know we'll always have developers working on Alchemon we'll always have new Alchemon uh, to release and things like that but that's kind of how we would do it if we were uh, going to build other people's games. Nice. And lastly, uh, any other games that you're excited about outside the Alchemon universe? Yeah, I'm super pumped for Cosmic Chance. Me too. Um, I definitely, I'm definitely going to be a Cosmic Chance whale. Um, and, nice. you know, it's funny, like, I'm, I, I always kick myself because I'm not, I mean, I'm an Alchemon whale from my, uh, from my uh, cut of the team tokens, but I'm definitely not an Alchemon whale in terms of NFTs because for the first, uh, <laughs> For the first three releases, maybe the first two releases, but everything was going to my personal wallet. So if I bought an Alchemon, besides the like the Rand fee, the all the money would come right back to my wallet. So everything was basically free for the first three set of cards. So I never bought one card of any of the first three sets. And now I'm kicking myself because now I've got the game. And I'm like, crap, I have to go and buy these cards at like, you know, a whatever percent markup. Right. Because I didn't want to buy them then. So I've just been for the last like three weeks, I've just been kicking myself. But I <laughs> went and like bought some off of secondary now just so I can have some of my favorites and play with them. So if, um, so so if we ever end up battling, I might have a chance, huh? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh definitely. Um so I'm definitely not an Alchemon NFT whale, but I'm definitely uh, super pumped about cosmic champs and really a whale on that. And um also another one, um, uh, you know, there's Alvatars who they're hopefully going to be having their packs opening soon and they're working on getting their game developed. Then there's uh, Moon Defenders, which is a small one, but uh, the man by the man known in various uh, names, Tall Allen or, you know, Gary Jules or whatever you want to call him. He's got like five different usernames. He uh, does mm -hmm. Moon Dudes and he's creating Moon Defenders, which is pretty cool. Just a, mm -hmm. looks like a cool game, kind of like a, uh, for lack of a better thing to name it after, like a plants versus zombies, moons versus aliens. So that seems pretty cool. Um, and, you know, Ajir, whatever they have coming, I'm super excited for that. I'm excited for everything in the game space, um, really. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, uh, Cosmic Champs has definitely caught my eye. I'm really anxiously awaiting to see what the gameplay actually looks like. 
Yeah, me too. I'm definitely um, getting my yogi ready to stay for as many uh, as many cosmic chance coins as possible. <laughs> Well, I look forward to battling you someday. Guys, go check out Alchemon. You can download it and play the game and, you know, go buy some critters off of a RAND gallery and you'll be good to go. Thanks for being on, Cliff. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me.